Hello, uh, welcome to another of our series of updates in surgical pathology uh, from the University of Oklahoma. My guest today is uh, Dr. Joelle Peterson, who is uh, uh, Director of Surgical Pathology here at the uh, uh, OU Medical Center and also Associate Director of our Residency and Training Program, doing a great job with that. So Joelle, you wanna tell us uh, about your topic and uh, uh, let, us, uh, let us get updated. Absolutely. So I will share my screen. Um, Dr. Hossel, it says uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, shucks. I forgot that again. That's okay. I can go ahead and start. So um, this is a topic of um, that has recently come on my diagnostic radar, and that is the um, SMARC-B1 deficient sinonasal carcinoma. And um, I apologize because this just messed up already. So let me start that again. Um, there we go. So um, this is the SMARC-B1 or INI1 deficient sinonasal carcinoma. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a brief overview of this entity. And what I have found is that um, this is a carcinoma that can be reliably distinguished from other carcinomas in the differential of this location with the addition of one or two um, extra stains more than, than what you might normally do but identifying this entity can potentially have a tremendous impact on the prognosis for these patients. I'll start by reviewing a case and then I'll summarize the recent literature on this topic. So this case involves a destructive mass centered in the nasal cavity from a patient in his 70s. On low power, the tumor is infiltrative in nests and sheets and there's abundant necrosis. On higher magnification, there are frequent mitotic figures, apoptosis, and prominent nucleoli, but also this really interesting, almost rhabdoid appearance to many of the cells. This appearance is seen throughout the entirety of the tumor. And for the more junior learners, rhabdoid has a very specific um, description. Rhabdoid refers to cells that have these eosinophilic or pink cytoplasmic bellies that stick off to the side and they often push the nucleus to the periphery. So this is a characteristic example of rhabdoid. For the, this particular case, because of the location and the morphology, the differential is quite broad. Um, I've listed many options here and you can probably think of a few things uh, to add. Ultimately, in a case like this, we are going, are going to need some immunohistochemistry to make the diagnosis. So here are a few of the stains that were performed in this case. And you can see that pancytokeratin is diffusely immunoreactive. There's variable immunoreactive reactivity for P63 within the tumor cells. Um, and then interestingly, there is weak focal synaptophysin immunoreactivity, but all of the other stains uh, performed such as CK56, S100 protein, EBV-ish, Desmond, myogenin, and NUT were all negative. The tumor showed diffuse loss of immunoreactivity for the INI1 or BAF47 antibody. And this is diagnostic of a SMARC B1 mutation. This is ultimately what confirms the diagnosis of a SMARC B1 or INI1 deficient sinonasal carcinoma. So SMARC B1 is a subunit of the SWE SNF chromatin remodeling complex that facilitates DNA transcription. This gene has been known by a variety of names, some of which may be more familiar to you, like BAF47 or INI1. SMARC-B1 deficient tumors are actually seen throughout the body, not just in the sinonasal cavity. And the prototypical tumor is called the malignant rhabdoid tumor. This was first described in the kidney, but actually occurs in soft tissue and viscera and even in the brain, where we like to give it a special name, the atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor or ATRT. The most recent addition of the WHO for classification of head and neck tumors was published in 2017. And it does give a couple of sentences uh, to this neoplasm under the heading of SNUC or sinonasal undifferentiated carcinoma. 
Basically, it says that a subset of tumors that lack SMARC-B1 protein and have rhabdoid morphology have been identified, but that it's unclear whether these constitute a distinct entity. But as I'll demonstrate, rhabdoid morphology is actually not the most common morphology for these carcinomas. And some more recent studies that have been published uh, since the WHO was submitted have shown this to be a highly aggressive tumor, possibly even more so than SNUC, uh, such that it is likely deserving of its own diagnostic consideration. About 90 cases of uh, SMARC-B1 deficient sinonasal carcinomas have been published since the entity was first described in 2014. This is the largest case series. It has a whopping 39 cases spanning 14 different institutions across the world. So even though this tumor is very likely under-recognized, it's still not going to be an overwhelmingly common tumor. Uh, the tumor has been described in pretty much all age groups from teenagers to patients in their 80s. So the majority of the reported cases don't actually look like the one I just shared with you. Instead, they display prominent basaloid morphology and features often mimicking a basaloid squamous cell or a SNUC or other small round blue cell tumors in this area such as NUT. Now overt keratinization um, and or surface dysplasia involving the epithelium overlying these tumors uh, is not a feature. So the presence of either one of these, overt keratinization or um, squamous dysplasia would exclude this diagnosis. In the example on the top right, we see an inverted growth pattern. And this is really reminiscent of an inverted uh, Schneiderian papilloma. The tumor on the bottom shows a more squamoid appearance um, and you can even see a cell that kind of looks rhabdoid. So in most of these, while rhabdoid cells are not the always apparent on first evaluation, often single cells or clusters of cells can be evaluated or identified with close inspection. The image on the bottom right was an example of a metastasis in this case series. This one was to the lung, and it actually showed that the metastasis showed diffuse rhabdoid morphology, and yet the primary tumor for this patient was one that demonstrated basaloid morphology. So the metastasis may not actually mirror the uh, histology of the primary tumor. Rhabdoid or plasmacytoid morphology is actually the second most common histologic appearance, and that is seen in the top two images. But other unusual variants have also been described, like this pseudogranulomatous pattern or tumors with adenoid appearances and mucin production. It's fairly easy to see how it can be very difficult to diagnose this on morphology alone. Sarcomatoid features have also been described, and they can either be diffuse, like what we see here on the right, or they can be focal in the background of a more basaloid looking tumor. So this is why with this such broad histomorphology, it's really important that we include the BAF47 or INI1 stain in the IHC panel of the workup for these difficult to classify carcinomas. Almost 100% of these tumors uh, will be diffusely immunoreactive for pancytokeratin and variably immunoreactive for other types of keratins. More than half of these tumors will be positive for P63, particularly those with a basaloid morphology will demonstrate diffuse P63 staining. And this is possibly a, uh, a the source of a misdiagnosis of non-keratinizing basaloid squamous cell or a nut midline carcinoma. So this is a diagnostic pitfall with these tumors, would be those that show diffuse P63 staining. Diffuse P63 staining does not exclude a SMARC-B1 deficient carcinoma. In addition to P63, some of these tumors can diffusely express P16, and that can cause confusion with an HPV-related squamous cell. So diffuse P16 does all, also does not exclude this entity. 
Another pitfall is the partial expression of neuroendocrine markers as seen in a small subset of cases, including the one that I shared with you a minute ago. The mere presence of neuroendocrine differentiation, especially if it is focal, does not exclude this diagnosis. Thus far, no cases of SMARC-B1 deficient carcinoma have been shown to be positive for NUT, EBV, or oncogenic HPV. A few cytology studies have um, also been published showing a similar morphologic spectrum from small round blue cell tumors all the way to spindle cell neoplasm with varying degrees of rhabdoid morphology. So this diagnosis can be made potentially from FNA material, especially if an INI1 or BAF47 is included in the IHC panel. The importance of making this diagnosis is as it relates to the treatment and prognosis. Most tumors present at advanced stages and most patients will succumb to disease within two years. There is some evidence that patients who receive aggressive post-surgical treatment tend to have a better outcome, making it important to establish this diagnosis correctly early on. Studies are also beginning to suggest that tumors with mutations in the same SWE SNF complex like SMARC-A4 may also have enhanced sensitivity to certain chemotherapeutics. And it's thought that that may translate to the SMARC-B1 deficient carcinomas. So making the correct diagnosis may also mean that the patient is eligible to receive certain chemotherapies, which may benefit. In summary, the tumor is defined by loss of INI1, which can be demonstrated immunohistochemically. Basaloid morphology is the most common histologic pattern, though rhabdoid cells can usually be found if you search hard enough. Expression of P63 and P16 and or neuroendocrine markers does not necessarily exclude this entity. The diagnosis can be made on cytology, and an accurate and early diagnosis may help facilitate aggressive post-surgical treatment, which potentially can improve outcomes for these patients. These are the articles referenced in this short discussion from which you can uh, find additional information on this topic. And I thank you very much for your attention and for the opportunity, Dr. Hassel. Can't hear you, Dr. Hassel, sorry. Thanks, Joelle, for this wonderful and insightful uh, elucidation on this topic. Uh, as I was going to say, I don't think this has shown up on the uh, uh, qualifying board exams yet, but with the differential as uh, significant and complex as this one, I, I have to imagine that uh, some of these uh, topics are going to start appearing in, uh, in major uh, situations like that, because this is certainly uh, something not to miss. So right. I, think our, I think our listeners will really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank Thank you very much. And uh, until next time, uh, we will uh, uh, thank you for joining us today.